You're tuned in to another episode of The Coaching Lounge with your host, Rebecca Gordon, lead life coach at SatelliteLifeCoaching.com. Listen to interviews with creative thinkers, motivational speakers, models of success and key people of influence. Tune in, relax, engage and transform your life. Thank you for joining me for another episode of The Coaching Lounge. I'm your host, I'm Rebecca Gordon, I'm a life coach, I'm a teacher, I'm a mother and I'm many other things besides that. But today I'm sitting very comfortably in my beautiful setting and I'm going to have a great conversation with my guest who is Andrew McDonald. And Andrew McDonald and I first became acquainted on Instagram. And um, that's just a classic example of one of the types of networking that we're going to talk about in today's show. Um, But on Instagram, we've had our connection for a good few months now. And Andrew has given me some wonderful and very, very good advice on networking. So I'm just going to quickly introduce Andrew to you and then bring him in so that you can hear everything he's got to say on the phenomenon of co- of networking, which sometimes can be a minefield, you know, if you're not used to it or if you are used to it, you know, perhaps being comfortable with it, but just to gather some tips and some strategies and techniques that can make your networking um, work very well for you. So who is Andrew McDonald? Andrew McDonald is a self-made author and speaker whose passion is to lead the world better than he found it. Growing up, Andrew has experienced it all, from living a comfortable middle-class life to providing food on the table and financial means for his family and everything in between. This unique perspective leaves Andrew with a relatable, genuine story he draws from to inspire others to succeed. Sometime during his times of tribulation, Andrew decided that if given the chance to exit his current circumstances, he would never live in poverty again. Instead, he would learn the skills of success to master his career, his emotions and his finances. Andrew also realised that if he were to be successful in these areas, he must take the spotlight off of him and share his success with the world. Andrew is also very active within the community, Not only is he involved as a volunteer with Inroads, we'll find out more about that, but um, it's a leadership development and internship non-profit organisation, but Andrew is also a founding member of a personal finance mastermind. And his pastimes include investing, exercise, sports, playing the trumpet and spending time with his lovely wife of two years. Andrew McDonald, welcome to the Coaching Lounge. Thank you, Rebecca. How are you? I'm excellent. I'm fantastic and all the better for speaking to you. And um, in that introduction, Andrew, um, you know, you're a man of many means and many hats, (laughs) you know, um, to, to, to yourself. So tell me more about you. Tell me what prompted you to actually move forward. One of the things you've actually said, um, you know, I've read out in your introduction, is that you recognise it's important to take the spotlight off you and share your success with the world. So tell me what's brought you to this point in your life. Sure. First of all, thank you so much for the opportunity to speak. Thank you so much for that awesome introduction. Um, And just a little bit about me. Uh, I've always had this this thought in my mind that I, I wanted to be successful. Um, And it was something that has driven me throughout the years, just this small thought that I was somebody. My mom used to sit me in front of the mirror and make me repeat it, repeat it all the time to boost my, um, you know, boost my my confidence, my self-confidence. And for some reason, it stuck. (laughs) (laughs) I'm glad it did. Right, right. It took me through some really tough periods in my life, you know, between my my parents' divorce, 
between me getting sick and almost uh, dying of an infection, yeah. between um, me struggling through college and being able to succeed and um, even earn my MBA, uh, mm-hmm. just even starting this business. I just felt that I wanted to be um, to do something with my life that was truly meaningful. Like Ooh. I said, I wanted to make the world better than I found it. Right. <laughs> so, I mean, well, you're, you're, yeah, carry on. Yeah, carry on. Thank you. Well, yeah. So, um, so this this thought it took me through some really hard, tough struggles, but I realized that in order to be really successful, in order to um, to for for to be remembered for generations. You have to have impact on other people. You have to take the spotlight off of you and focus on how you can um, make the world a better place, so to speak. You need to learn how to impact people and impact lives and make their lives better. So that's what I do. I make sure that my uh, my success is based on everyone else's success. So I take the spotlight off of me, put it on other people, and that, that way we can all celebrate in success. That's excellent. And I love the word impact. That's such a strong word. And your story is actually a good description of inner strength and how inner strength has acted as an anchor for you to hold you firmly when you've had some real, you know, tribulations and tests in your life. Um, so that's, re- you know, something that you can draw from. Um, and I love the fact that you say, I mean, is it then that um, what you're saying really is the recognition that when we are of service, it's less about ego and it's much more about serving others. Exactly. That's exactly what I'm saying. Um, If you're familiar, I have more... Well, when I was thinking these thoughts when I was a kid, it was more of a Will Smith type of confidence right. than, let's say, a Kanye West type of confidence. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. So yeah. that's that's the type of viewpoint I take. It's a inner confidence about yourself without being boastful or arrogant about your Absolutely. successes. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Great. Okay. So um, your website is a wealth of information, actually. What's your website link? Can you share that with the listeners? Sure. It's uh, www.possessyoursuccess.com. So you're all about success. And one of the things, um, you know, it's probably good to flag up right now is that success is relative to the individual. So, you know, you have your own definition of success. You know, we have our own, everyone has their own definition of success. But one of the things I know you have um, a niche in is professional networking. And that's what I want to focus on for today, Andrew, if that's okay with you. Absolutely. Yeah, because I'm really keen to explore that. The show today is called Why Networking is the New Dating. So my first question on this topic is, what is the networking relationship really about? Networking is all about, like you said, relationships. You said it exactly when you just mentioned that. Uh, You have to be able to build a relationship when you're doing networking. Just don't even think about it as networking per se because it takes all the um, all the personality out of it. It has to be something that's personal to you. It has to be a personal connection that you're having with someone else. Just like in any other relationship, a friendship or, um, you know, like a, a you know, more personal connection with, with like your wife or your husband. You know, these t- it's a relationship that you need to build. And relationships have to have trust. They have to have communication. They have to have constant contact with each other. And there ha- it has to be sincere. So when people go into a networking event, um, it's challenging for them because it, ju- it just feels like a way to better yourself. But on the other hand, if you look at it as how can I provide value to someone else, that's when a real relationship, a real connection is made. And from there, there's, I mean, there's boundless possibilities that you can take that relationship moving forward. Mm, I love that summary that you've put there. And actually the question 
Um, how can I provide value to someone else? I mean, that's a good question to have at the forefront of your mind. I will share with you and um, the thousands of people that are listening to this right now. Um, in my very, very early days of networking, you know, years ago, I do recall sort of like going in with the cell. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, I mean, um, recognizing that that is actually a repellent. So right. that will not get you, you know, ultimately the connection that you want. And it's, it is about being of service. So on that note, um, realizing that I had a challenge, you know, my networking wasn't really um, bringing the results that I wanted. Um, what are some of the challenges that you've heard people say that they have when it comes to networking? Sure. So um, one of the hugest challenges is just the, the awkwardness at the beginning of, um, you know, meeting someone or being at a networking event. And, you know, it's almost like, you know, you're a wallflower standing on the wall. You're not sure who to talk to and everything. That's what, probably one of the biggest challenges is just breaking the ice, you know, making sure that you're able to talk to people because it, it is very, very intimidating, especially if it's something that's new or foreign to you. Um, but one of the things you have to do is you have to mentally prepare yourself that, you know, everybody else is feeling the same way. Uh, you know, they're, they're, you just um, just strike up a it's conversation, you walk up to somebody, say, introduce yourself and um, just start making connections. Um, the biggest thing that can help you in that situation is to just um, just find connection points. Um, just try to find those little connection points that you might have in common with others. And at that point, you start um, the other person starts responding, and then uh, just treat it like a like a game. Let's see how many connection points you can find with that person. And you'd be surprised at how far that takes you in a conversation. That leads to side conversations. That leads to to uh, banter and, and witty comments and all of a sudden by the end of it all you're totally immersed in um, a conversation with that individual. Mm. So um, in terms of the um, communication model you know when we talk about um, your body language about your voice about um, you know the principles of communication all of that mm -hmm. um, uh, Questioning, I think, is key in this initial introduction and to be an inquirer. What are your thoughts on that? Yes, definitely. So you uh, initially you want to feel you want to seem confident. You want to see confident in yourself um, because people vibe off of confidence. Um, the second thing you want to do is you don't want to do anything to turn the person off, like you know, stand all straight and rigid, or um, you know, uh, just like start. Um, you know, shifting your eyes side to side or something like that, yeah. you know, like think, start fidgeting with stuff. Those are the things. It's almost like um, things you might do in an interview when you're nervous. Yes. You want to make sure you do the same things to prepare yourself. Like, um, you know, take some deep breaths, you know, before you even enter the place. Take some deep breaths and um, focus on the end result of what, what you want. Like visualize how you want that um that day to go or that that night to go um yeah, you know yeah. visualize the end result the, the success that you're going to have and then all of a sudden things will start falling in place and you'll start acting that part but it all comes comes down to making sure you have that key confidence about yourself and then the nonverbals will display that that right so, okay okay excellent mm -hmm. tips there okay right so um myself um, you know, in terms of being an introvert or extrovert, I'm towards the introvert um, personality. Mm -hmm. So what, I know you've given some tips on it's about being confident and how to, you know, manage yourself and your state. But what tips could you give to someone who is, who is an introvert who, I remember, you know, some, uh, about a year ago now, I had a coaching client, a really lovely lady, very, mm -hmm. very good at what she, what, what she does, and wanting to start her business and realizing that network is key um, mm -hmm. because she did, um, it was some um, complimentary therapy, therapy that she did. 
So we were talking about networking, and one of the things she says to me is that actually I don't like putting myself out there. <laughs> you know, right. I'm quite introvert. <laughs> you know, um, I just like to. I would just like to sort of like have people know I'm here, but not make the approaches to go out to networking events and to talk to people. So mm-hmm. for someone who's an introvert who might be anxious, who might be shy. What can you say to them that will alleviate some of the, the, you know, their feelings about networking? <laughs> well, I think the first, first and foremost, and it may seem obvious, but um, introverts, you're not alone. <laughs> I was. <laughs> I, I was actually an introvert when I was when I was a kid. I I thought of myself as more of an introvert. Um, when I, as far as making connections and making friends. I didn't really start focusing on that until in my teens, uh, when I was like 14, 15, 16. That's when I started um, definitely um, coming out of my shell, I guess. But when I was a, a little kid, I was I had like a, a core, maybe two or three friends, and that was it. And so um, one of the things I learned over the years is you just um, it just you just have to put yourself out there. You know, start joining groups um, that that you may have a shared interest in. Uh, let's say your thing is photography or graphic design, or you know, or even um, gardening. There, um, join like a meetup group or something, a, a community group where other people share that interest because you automatically have something to talk about. Mm-hmm. You know. Also, another thing you could do is. Um, um, meet up with um, someone who is an extra extrovert and just observe them as they're um, making conversations with others. Uh, sh- learn what they are doing and how it how it leads to better or worse conversations, and then try to manage, um, t- trying to take mental notes and be able to see what they're doing right and what they're not doing right, and then use that to your advantage. When you try to do the same thing, so and then the third thing is you just got to get started. You, yeah. you know, you just have to get started. Start small. Start with a low risk setting, and then um, work your way from there. Uh, it does. It's, it's a skill. It's not something that people are <clears throat> necessarily um, born with, and that's the way it's going to be. It's a skill you have to develop. You know, just like any other type of communication or any other type of skill, it's something you need to work at and work at and work at. And then after a while, you'll start seeing the fruits of your labor. Mm. So it's like building a muscle, really, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, in terms of, of dating, some of the, you know, principles are actually quite similar in terms of getting to know someone, you know, you go out on various dates, you know, before you get married, you know, or, mm-hmm. for example. So it is very much um, similar in terms of building up the connections and the familiarity and being comfortable, with, with, you know, with someone else, really. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. So um, you've actually, yeah, you've mentioned um, the approaches I'm interested to know what, because you know the elevator pitch, yeah, the elevator pitch, mm-hmm. um, when someone asks you about your business and what you do, um, and that this is something that I would imagine, you know, comes out in a networking conversation when people want to find mm-hmm. out about each other. What makes for a good pitch? What are some of the elements that someone can consider including in their pitch? Right. So I guess it depends a little bit on the setting that you're that you're in. If you're at a professional networking setting or something at work, you may have a different pitch than when you're just meeting individuals out, you know, getting a drink or at a bar or something like that. But um, the key element is that you want to tell, um, you know, uh, just your story, just a little bit about yourself. If you're talking... In a work setting, you want to talk about your professional story. So you want to start with, um, you know, wh- where you got your degree, what your degree is in. Um, talk about one or two key points from each job that you had. Um, this is my this is my job title, and this is so these are some of the things that I've done. And then um, just lead it with something interesting or something notable that you've done while you were there. So, um, 
that'll provide some context a little bit more into who you are and then start getting uh, see where the conversation goes um, sometimes it'll lead to um, side conversations something sometimes it'll lead to things that are a little bit more personal about where you're from you know um, the people that you've met or um, you know things like that where you travel you know like it, 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 it you'll see conversations start to to lead in different directions and you just have to um, keep in mind where you're kind of going um, yes. you know and yes. you, you know you, sometimes you want might want to lead the conversation sometimes you want maybe want the other person to lead the conversation but there are, there are different ways to handle that now in a personal setting you definitely want to talk more about your um, about yourself when you're introducing yourself. You know more about where you're from, um, a little bit about your job, um, your current job, and then um, some interesting, notable points about you. If you have like a favorite sports team, or if you have some kind of um, hobby that you really enjoy, um, you know, talk about that. But you don't want to leave it to where it's like a 30 minute conversation about yourself you definitely want to um talk more about um you know like talk about yourself in maybe like a uh, three to five minute time span five minutes tops at that point people are starting to uh check out <laughs> you know so you don't want to bore yeah. them so i think if you try to keep it to three minutes you'll be good okay mm -hmm. so one of the important things you've mentioned there is to be aware of your different settings and consciously adjust and you've mentioned professional networking um, networking in personal settings. I mean, um, over here we have speed networking. Is that something that you have in the States? Yes, yes. We have speed yeah. networking, speed ding a lot of speed stuff. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. So, so, I mean, for you, what, what, what's your preference? What, what, what do you think um, gets the best results? Which type? So I think, like I said before, going to... Um, shared interest groups are the best form of networking because you have people that are already there for a certain um, for a certain purpose you know either to develop or hone their skills or to network with other individuals but when you go to just a general let's say networking event you have, you find you end up meeting a lot of sleaze balls a lot of people that don't know how to network a lot of awkward people um, and then it just makes for a very um, dry experience. Mm. Um, but you okay. want to go to something that's meaningful to you and meaningful to other people because that automatically starts conversations and you meet some really good um, people that way. Mm. What's a great result that you've had, Andrew, um, in your experience? Sure, sure. Let me tell you um, a, a funny story. So um, when I was in, I just moved to Atlanta. I think it was 2010, so about six years ago. And um, I had gotten a, a Facebook message from one of my old professors uh, saying, hey, we're having this um, Florida State University network event. That's the university I went to uh, for my undergrad degree. And so I, um, they were saying they're, yeah, we're having this network event for IT professionals and I, um, I got my degree in IT, and I was like, "Oh yeah, that makes sense." But I was a little nervous because I didn't, I did, I've never been to one of these types of networking events before. Um, you know, I had things that that I had to do that week, but I was like, "You know what? Let me just uh, uh, make an appearance. I'll just see what it's about." Okay. And so I I went to that event and I met some really really cool people. I met the CEO of a company that eventually became my mentor. Um, I met um, an individual um, that's become one of my friends. That week I met the dean of libraries and the dean of the College of Communication and then they invited me to, to dinner at a fancy restaurant and that led to other um, meeting, the networking meetings with other individuals in Atlanta when they came back up to Atlanta. Um, I mean, it was just, there's so many benefits just from that one experience. I was able to make like 10 connections that have helped me in, um, 
today, it's still paying off. Just by showing up and saying, let me give it a shot. And just listening to people and listening to what they had to say. So it was, it, it was an amazing experience. But that's the power of networking. You, you, you find some relationships that will help you get to your goals or get to where you want to go. That sounds awesome. It's very powerful. And um, I'm just going to pick up on something you said. You said just by showing up. You know, mm-hmm. sometimes we, we, we see it in an event and we think, wow, that's going to be great. And yes, we're going to go, but never attend and opportunities that we miss out on. So showing right. up, you know, <laughs> is key. And then from there, greater things can happen. Okay. Exactly. All right. So I'm in the coaching lounge with Andrew McDonald and we're talking about networking and networking as building up relationships and uh, making connections with others. We're going to take a short break and on the return of the break, we're going to touch base with Andrew again, where we'll be discussing another type of networking and also um, talk to Andrew about his um, book and um, other things that he's involved in. So please stay tuned. We will be back in a short while. We support your transformation. Stay tuned for more engaging discussion after this short break. Usually, we struggle through life alone with outdated beliefs and self-sabotaging actions that bring the same results. How different would it be if you had a personal success coach who helped you make the shift and create a plan for happiness? You will fearlessly align your values, achieve important goals, and reframe your perspective when you have coaching with me. Email Rebecca at info at satellitelifecoaching.com Book your free discovery session and change your life. You have joined Rebecca Gordon and Andrew McDonald in the Coaching Lounge and we are talking about networking and Andrew's given us some great tips um, recently he's spoken about showing up um, that we've been talking about um, you know just making sure you get out there um, mingle network and Andrew says it's important to think about what you want the result to be as a result of showing up and going to network at an event to visualize how you want the date to go as if you you know just think about a dating situation how would you want it to go you want to be your best you want to maintain contact with this person you know you really want great things to happen after the event so with that in mind let's just talk about after the event andrew networking is great you show up you attend you make connections but what next what should happen immediately after a networking event? Sure. So uh, uh, once you get home uh, after a networking event, you definitely want to take, um, first of all, what, at, during the event, you got to make sure you take their contact information, write it down, take business cards. And then um, as soon as you get home, make sure you organize it, keep it safe, because you, we all know how pieces of paper and, and uh, business cards end up getting lost <laughs> in the yeah. abyss of your pocket so, or your purse somewhere in between the networking <laughs> event and the time you got home. So make sure you keep that safe. And then when you, you get home, maybe um, that night or the next day, start going through remembering the people that you met. Um, the sooner you can do this, the better, because um, you, know, you may look at a name and then you just totally – forget that person or who they are so maybe on the back of that card or piece of paper make sure you write down some notes about that person and then what you can do um, a day or two later is follow up with them email them or um, connect with them on social media I find that LinkedIn is perfect for this type of 
occasion. Um, if it's a more professional contact, especially because that's what that's what it's for. Um, sometimes you may turn a person off, especially if it's someone like a CEO or something like that. If you just right. read on Facebook or something like that, mm-hmm. but um, if you follow them on Twitter, that's totally acceptable. If you uh, find them on LinkedIn, that would be good too. Just send a, and make sure you send them a note to make it a little personalized. Hey, I I really um, had a great time meeting you last last night or a couple of days ago. Um, this is these are the things that we talked about, and make sure that um, you include that relevant information that you talked about because they may be in the same position where they got home and they just totally forgot, <laughs> you know, mm, that's who, true, who yeah. were, or you know, like they forgot the connection. Mm. But sending that reminder, hey, we talked about X Y Z, not only mm. shows that you were interested in listening to them, but it also reminds them of who you are, and you know. Mm. To, you know, a little bit about them or a little bit about you gives them a refresher. So those are the things you can do to really um, step your networking game up and really become re- really become memorable in other people's eyes. Mm, okay, excellent. I love that tip there. Um, you know, the notes on the back of the card and include something relevant um, when you contact them. And you mentioned LinkedIn, um, which is a great networking tool. You know, I've used LinkedIn and has some excellent connections that I'm still maintaining now. Mm-hmm. And I'm just interested to know what you've mentioned, the benefit of um, social media networking. What might be some downfalls of modern networking using social media? Yeah, social media, it can be very, very awkward at times because it may come off as impersonal, you know, especially or you may lose context into um, what you're what you're talking about. And then people, a lot of people just post anything on the Internet, you know, you got to be very, very careful about what you post. So people may connect with you and then see an unflattering picture of you from several years ago. I know I've been... um, guilty of that at times even though I try to keep my my um my pictures as professional as possible um yes. you know like just that one picture that you may have missed is that one picture <laughs> that turns them off you know? so those, those things right. tend to happen um also you got to be aware of the medium that you use um to 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 network with other individuals and also the, the medium that they use might be totally different. So maybe they're more involved on LinkedIn than they are Facebook. Maybe they don't even have a Facebook. Well, it would be a waste of time to to start looking at, on Facebook for them. And then you may just say, you may just give up there. When they're really active on LinkedIn, you just need to know the medium that they use. Um, right. you know, then... If you end up in that position um, where you're trying to find them, where they're they're not responding, you may be turned off because you may think, oh, this person is just ignoring me when they just don't even check that medium at all. Yeah, <laughs> you know? that so. is true. That's true. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. So um, you do talks on professional networking. You, you um, I know you do a few talks and this is one that you do. You're a keynote speaker. Right. On this topic. Right. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. I talk okay. about professional networking all the time. I also talk okay. about goal setting and it, 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 it can be all relevant because in order to achieve your goals, you have to build a strong network. I mean, it's very, very, it's all, almost like um, going up a down escalator. <laughs> so <Okay>. without, <laughs> without networking, it makes it really, really challenging. You may be able to get there depending on what you do. But wouldn't you want to take the easy route and just go up the up escalator? I mean, get you there a lot quicker and with less effort. <laughs> that sounds great to me, yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and um, who do you give talks to? What sort of settings? Sure, sure. I like to talk to more of the millennial crowd, um, to those that are between ages 18 to 24 that are just really discovering the world. They have some a little bit of sense about them. But um, they just need to know what the next step is and really how to step their game up to where when they they hit the real world um, after college um, and a little bit past college, 
they they can hit the ground running. You know, they can get they have all the tools that they need to become successful and, and achieve the success that they want in life. So that's kind of the the, t- the people that I talk to generally. Okay. Mm-hmm. And um, I know you have um, a concept, a model, which is the three-level support system. Yes. Can you tell me more about that, please, Andrew? Yes, that's one of the things that I highlight in my book, Possess Your Success. Um, right. And what I talk about is the um, this three-layer la- of support. Um, it's really to help you to achieve your goals, and it also definitely involves networking. Because the first le- level of support is from those that are above you, those who have made it, your mentors, you know, your heroes, and those that you find that are your models of success. They embody the success that you want to achieve. You know, they provide the, the, the direction and provide the experience that you may not yet have that when you talk to them, you'll be able to gain those experiences and gain those life lessons without having to go through, endure their pain you know, they you could just learn from their experiences and then um, achieve success much faster. Yes. The second, the second layer of support is made up of your peers. So those that are around you that are in a similar situation. Some may be a little bit ahead. Some people may be a little bit behind. But they're your accountability partners. They're your partners in crime. They're going through the same um, situation. So they, you may develop a little bit of more of a camaraderie with them Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and then finally the third layer of support is your friends and mentors or I'm sorry your fans and your mentees those that have a ways to go they're just getting started in this journey Um, they're the upper comers that you want to learn from you know or that that want to learn from you and your experiences Mm -hmm. You know, they, yes. they, they're they really necessary for a couple of things. Number one, they they make you feel good. It's a confidence booster that people want to learn from you. And second, it's necessary to sol- solidify your understanding uh, or skills, as well as being able to help keep you on your toes. You you know, they, they, they're the up-and-comers, so they may be showing you things that are new that you've never even seen before. So they may expose you to some, some new revolutionary things that you haven't quite experienced yet. Mm. Now, Very interesting, yeah. One more, one more point in that is that the third layer of support, those fans and everything, you're not going to have them day one, and that's totally fine. You know, you want to focus on the first two um, layers, the, the people that are around you in your same position and your mentors. Start with the mentors and then go to people around you. And then you'll find that once you start achieving some levels of success, people are going to automatically gravitate you, to you and say, how is that person doing what they're doing? And then they're going to find um, the same thing. And then you teach that same principle to them. And then they're going to spread it to their people around them. And then so the chain keeps moving and moving. It's a, it's, it's a vi- uh, virtuous cycle as they say. Right, yes. And um, people, well, listeners can read more about that, um, the three-level support system. They can read more about that system in your upcoming book, um, Possess Your Success, Mastering the Limitless Success Method. What a great title. Thank you. And when when is that book out? It's actually out next week, but you can pre-order it now. Yeah, right now I have it on ebook, and then the... The uh, paperback book is co- becoming available shortly in the next few weeks. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. And I'm interested to know, I mean, um, when you sat down to write this book, um, what motivated you to actually say, I need to write this, pos- this book, Possess Your Success? What motivated you to do that? Right. So um, a few years ago, I realized as I was starting this business, And I was really um, developing my knowledge, going through other books and reading, you know, um, looking at my mentors and talking with them, that I was I was getting this feeling that there was a book inside of me that I needed to get out. And then all of a sudden I started thinking about the things that made me successful and looking at other people that were successful. And I'm like, what are the things that separate these people that are continually successful 
from the people that either they the one stop one shot deals where they just have their moment of success and then fade into um, you know mediocrity, or those who never even make it to that point of success. You know what separates the continually successful from those that aren't, and I realized that it was this three step method, what I call the limitless success method. Now okay. the um, the three steps to to success, it's nothing that hasn't been explained before, but it's never been captured in the way that I have captured it. As to why it works, I explain it from um, a, a practical principle principle as well as um, from a, a more spiritual or more um, emotional type of um, way to think about it so I balance the two in a way that shows that even even if you don't believe in let's say spiritual or uh, you know more the emotional type of feel-good stuff there are there's practical data there's empirical data that shows that this success method works this limitless success method it works so I'm, I'm really excited for it. It's really going to yeah. change people's lives. So. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And just um, before I ask you the finishing questions now, if you can just share your contact details where people can download the ebook. Will the um, ebook be available? The, 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 the special limited um, version, is that going to be available for a while, Andrew? Yes, definitely. So this ebook version is going to be available um, on Amazon. Um, I'll right. definitely I'll send you the link to the um, to to the um, the ebook. Um, right. If you want to find me, um, you can go to my website possessyoursuccess.com. You can also find me on social media. Um, you can on Facebook, um, facebook.com slash possessyoursuccess. My Twitter handle is at possessys. Um, on Instagram, I provide some great posts about um, motivation and how to keep yourself motivated, success. Um, I try to provide a lot of different principles on there. Yeah. Um, yes. So you can check me out on that. At, um, my, my handle is possessyoursuccess. <clears throat> and then connect with me on LinkedIn as well. So just find Andrew yes. McDonald. I'll be happy to yeah. accept. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Now, just before we go into the quick fire section, Andrew, I'm mm -hmm. going to read, because I actually, in our earlier connection in February, I asked you um, a question about networking, you know, to help me to improve. And you gave me some fantastic advice, which I still have here, and I'm going to read it now for the audience. Okay, what you told me, Andrew, you said this. Most times, people approach networking almost like a transaction. However, it's about making a connection, like a friendship. You must connect with people, learn about their interests and care about them. You must also provide them with value, something they desire. When both of your interests are aligned and each person values each other, a relationship is formed and you can use that to fulfil each other's needs. And that's a quote from Andrew MacDonald. Andrew, that, and uh, that's why I've given the, the title of this show, you know, why networking is a new dating, because that information there actually is like the dance of a relationship, isn't it? Right, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. and then the, the piece about value, it's so, so critical. Um, one of the things that Albert Einstein said was, try not to be a person of success, but rather a person of value. And what he meant by that is that it's okay to be successful, but if you provide value to someone, it will automatically happen. It will come eventually after some time. If you become valuable to others, then they will gravitate towards you and then thus promote you to that place of success that you're looking for. And that whether it's goal setting, whether it's networking, whether it's achieving career goals or whatever have you, the, that notion of value is so important because that is the, the, the kickstarter to your success. Fantastic. Okay, mm -hmm. so Andrew, are you ready for the quick fire section? Absolutely. Okay, so I'm going to ask you three um, questions. 
The first one is, what's number one in your self-care routine? What's number one in my self-care routine? I found that waking up early in the morning, I subscribe to Hal Elrod's Miracle Morning (laughs) principle. Um, Just waking up at around 5.30, 6 o'clock in the morning and taking that first hour and devoting it to just time alone, spent stretching, um, spent, um, spent visualizing my success, um, getting some creative work out of the way, and just just drinking some water, making sure that I have a set routine in the morning where I don't feel like I'm up and then just straight to work mm-hmm. makes me feel like I'm so much more alive during the day. So that was one thing that's really important to me. That sounds like a power start. <laughs> right. Yeah. And who did you say that concept was by? You said Elrod? Yes, Hal Elrod. H A L. Yes. Mm-hmm. Elrod. E L R O D. He's the author okay. of The Miracle Morning. And then he oh. also has um, a best year ever coaching um, business. So he's a, he's a really, really good person to know. He also has an awesome podcast called Achieving Your Goals. Okay, I must check that out. I've not heard of him before. Thank you very yeah. much for that. Mm-hmm. Okay, so question number two. Are you a hammer or nail? I'm definitely a hammer. <laughs> okay, yeah. tell me more. I, because I like to have the control. I like to have the, the influence and that's not to say that I, um, I'm a forceful type of person but uh, or aggressive type of person. But I realize that I need to get things done. I like to affect other people as, or have an impact on other individuals. Um, so I'm not just here to have the wind just blow me in any which direction. I have a, uh, I have a purpose and I'm going to get to that purpose and I'm going to get it done. Fantastic. I bet your mom's so proud of you, isn't she? <laughs> yes, she is. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> I can great. imagine. Yeah, yeah. Because when you started off the conversation, you were saying your mom, you know, she had you um, saying to yourself, you know, I am somebody. And from the early age, that is like a root, really, that's really set deep. And, you know, you're all about um, the impact, the effect and being purposeful and, you know, just helping others. And, and I really feel that very strongly. Mm-hmm. Yes, absolutely. So, so um, the third question then, Andrew, is what has life taught you? What has life taught me? Oh, man, that's a loaded question. I could go on and on about that one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I'll tell, tell you one me, thing. <laughs> okay, maybe I should rephrase the question, mm-hmm. yeah? What one thing has life taught you that others need to hear because it will make a difference for them today? Uh, Life has taught me that your success is out there. That's a whole notion about my business. You know, it's in the title of my business, the name of my business. Your success is out there. It's available to you. It's 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 already there. You just have to go out there and take the steps necessary to achieve that success or to possess that success. That's what it takes. Mm, fantastic. Okay, Andrew, it's been a pleasure talking to you today in the coaching lounge. Um, what are your closing your, your closing words? Sure. Um, like I said before, um, take a take a look at uh, my website. Oh, <clears throat> I wanted to get go through two quick things before I, before I go. Um, uh, right. First, a special gift to your to your um, listeners and your fans. Um, if you want the first two chapters of my book, Possess Your Success, absolutely free. Just go to possessyoursuccess.com slash free chapters, and you can download it absolutely free. And then um, the other thing is that I'm launching uh, my Periscope, uh, my my Periscope uh, social media following. So connect with me on Periscope, at PossessYS. And I'm excited. I'm going to be posting twice a week starting uh next week and i'm really really excited about the content i'm going to be sharing there yeah so okay so many more great things to come from andrew mcdonald yes yes Uh, okay andrew thank you it's been a great pleasure 
Absolutely. Thank you very much for having me on. You're welcome, and we will stay connected. Thank you, Rebecca. Take care. Think big for a moment. If you could create your best life, how would this look? What if, in just 30 minutes, you had a plan of action to get closer to your dream? Make the impossible possible and claim your free session today. Visit www.satellitelifecoaching.com now. Thank you for tuning into the Coaching Lounge. Join us next time for more insightful interviews with inspiring guests. You can hear previous shows on SoundCloud by searching for Satellite Life Coaching. We're always interested to hear your feedback and topic suggestions, so don't hesitate to email us on info at satellitelifecoaching.com.